Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a Core 2 Extreme processor that I managed to get for free. Does it work? I don't know. Has it been overclocked? I don't know. These are the questions I put forward and the answers I got when buying it. Well, not buying, but collecting this CPU from the Facebook marketplace. As part of an old collection of what was mostly junk, I'm told this decade old processor's owner was moving house and had to get rid of the few remaining remnants before the end of the week. Furthermore, they told me it was purchased from CEX quite recently. What a hectic story, I thought. Something wasn't right. They were definitely moving, but why would you buy something only to give it away soon after? Were they going to prison? Have I just bought a PC component from a criminal? Is it stolen? All relevant questions, I'm sure you'll agree, considering these still sell for over £50 here in the UK, and sometimes much more if boxed. Released in the closing quarter of 2007, this 45 nanometer QX9650 features a huge 130 watt TDP and a massive price tag to match. With 4 cores, 4 threads and a 3 GHz clock speed, it was an ideal part for enthusiasts looking to do some serious overclocking. Having seen a couple of videos of this thing in action at 4 GHz and beyond, I was getting pretty excited at the potential, but my big plans were halted by bigger problems. This is the ASUS P5ND. A fantastic old school 775 board that looks excellent and offers great support and features including official compatibility with the QX9650. With that in mind I assembled the system with this 750i chipset based board at the heart of it and also opted to use this aftermarket cooler to try and keep temperatures as low as possible. I paired it with 8GB of 667 MHz DDR2 to start with as well as my trusty GTX 1070. The first thing to do was to check out the raw CPU power, so for that I opened up Cinebench R15 and began the multi-core benchmark. A score of 315 is pretty respectable, the sort of score you should expect from say a standard yet overclocked Core 2 quad. I also ran the Geekbench 4 test just so we'd have something to compare it to later, and again, it didn't do too badly. This was reflected by the generally ok everyday performance. I then fired up a couple of modern games, the first of which being Battlefield 5. I was uh, probably expecting a bit too much and here it was clear to see that our CPU was maxing out on all cores, with the 1070 just walking along beside it. Changing the resolution made no difference as expected due to the CPU load situation, though Battlefield does still look quite good at low. Just out of curiosity I then launched Far Cry 5, again not expecting much, and we saw very similar results with any tested resolution. Maybe the average of 15 was a little higher, but the CPU was still holding us back here. It's a pretty good looking game even with reduced graphical detail, but that's besides the point. So, it was time to up my game a little, but then the system crashed. Temperatures were fine and everything seemed to be going to plan, but the PC just restarted. With this discovery I held off any overclocking and continued to use this processor for about 4 hours. During this time frame I experienced 15 unplanned restarts, 3 freezes, 3 blue screens and one instance whereby the system didn't post at all. I thought the chip was done for but out of nowhere it fired up again and at this point I wondered if the RAM was the issue. I then tried an array of configurations and after reading the official supported memory PDF on the ASUS website I realised that maybe 4 sticks were the problem. I mean the system has booted and run so I think I'm just in denial about a potentially damaged CPU here, but nonetheless I tried just two sticks of DDR2 instead, a setup more encouraged by the ASUS website. The reason I'm detailing everything that occurred during my quest to get this thing working is because building a PC isn't always straightforward, even for someone who's always putting together different configurations, and by talking about the stuff that can go wrong, or doesn't always work out, I hope it could potentially help you with any build issues. In this case, I was still experiencing some post issues with constantly different results even after getting through this whole bag of memory, as well as a few different GPUs. Eventually, these two 800MHz officially supported modules meant a straightforward boot, followed by a good few hours of PC usage without any hiccups or crashes. I was certain at this point we had resolved our problems. The CPU was still running cool and performance felt pretty reasonable considering the age of this processor, so I decided to try a mild overclock. A couple of quick adjustments and we were running at 3.83GHz. Not an amazing increase, but an effortless drama free one. The PC booted up just fine and I saw an immediate improvement in the Cinebench R15 score, with idle temperatures now at around 39 degrees. Our Geekbench 4 score was also improved here. 
Crisis, a game that released in the same year as this CPU, also ran pretty well with the high settings at 1080p, again with no processor issues, uh, frame rate or temperature wise. Even to this day, Crisis will put uh, demanding hardware through its paces, and it's clear to see here we weren't able to achieve 60 frames per second, especially since this is a CPU bound game, but I do think it did quite well at the settings we used, if not for a few frame drops here and there. I then tried out Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which although averaged near 30 frames per second at low, was incredibly stuttery. Don't forget we are still running with just 4 gigs of RAM, which probably made things worse, but I had no choice. At this point, I decided to make a plan of action to go all out in the future. Liquid cooling, a better DDR3 supported enthusiast motherboard, and an entire library of modern games to test. I was going to get the most from this chip if it killed it. So there we have it. Now I would have loved to uh, do this video entirely in one go, but unfortunately the parts I've ordered haven't arrived yet. Now it's still in the back of my mind that the processor is uh, at the centre of all of the problems we've been having. As you can see it does work, although it seems to be quite temperamental. I'm still hoping it isn't that. I'm hoping perhaps it is the motherboard or the RAM, despite me trying all those different configurations. Um, because I really am determined to get this thing up and running. It's not the end of the world if it turns out to be uh, faulty in whatever way because I will just purchase another one from eBay um, because I really want to explore this old CPU and perhaps even put it in that old Alienware case. I originally built a Ryzen 2000 based system in there um, but it would be cool to take it back a little bit, build an old school rig, perhaps run XP or Windows 7 on it and uh, see what we can do from there. Of course, the first step is to get it working. Now, my plans are to, or my plan is, when it arrives, to use the DDR3-based Socket 775 board. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, along with some better performing memory, a liquid cooler as well, and hopefully we can get this thing running um, with better temperatures or just running consistently in the first place because it seems to be okay. It's just causing a lot of problems. I guess even when something's free it can be too good to be true and there's always a reason someone's getting rid of something um, especially if they're just giving it away but as for this one I hope you've enjoyed it if you have leave a like on it down below if you haven't leave a dislike subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I will see you all in the next video.